Now, Labour, the party, has uh, made a bold move by softening their stance over Brexit, saying that if they were in power, they would keep Britain in the single market and the customs union for up to four years after leaving the EU. Finally got off the fence on this one. It would also mean keeping the EU's free movement rules. Now, some senior Labour MPs are concerned that this change is going to lead to a backlash in Labour heartlands, which support much stronger controls on immigration. Joining us now is former Labour adviser Aisha Hazarika, along with Mark Wallace from the website Conservative Home. Is Just turn to the Tories' attitude on this. Is this giving the Tories a bit of a problem? Now that Labour have come out clearly and said this, that they've got a constituency at last, uh, they, they, they can develop a following. Well, I think it's definitely the case that the Labour Party are manoeuvring here to try and see if they can pick off a couple of Tory MPs who might, they think, perhaps be tempted by this prospect of staying in the single market. But to be honest with you, if anything, I think the, the government is still a little bit bewildered about exactly where Labour are going with this. This is, what, their 13th, their 14th position on Brexit since the referendum, and it's still not quite, not quite clear, really. I, I think the Labour Party should probably be a little more concerned about a lot of their Leave voters who back them and will now be a bit worried. Yeah, and that's... I mean, there is a fair point there. There are a lot of uh, Labour MPs who represent constituencies where... Then that was the big concern mm. for them, wasn't it? Yeah. Do I vote for Remain when I personally feel that way? That's better for the country, some of them said. Or do I go with my constituency who I'm voted in to represent? And this, you know, this stance, who does this appeal to? Well, I think this appeals to everybody, actually, because I think there was a huge oh, number of... those who voted for Brexit. Well, no, no, I, think, appeals no, to everybody. Because I think quite a lot of people... I think quite a lot of people, and I've actually gone into Labour constituencies, which were Labour heartland constituencies, but they voted to leave. People want to come out of the EU, but they are very worried about the cliff edge, particularly people who do a lot of trade, small business people who do a lot of trade with the EU. A lot of people said to me, look, we would prefer. They're very anxious about how the negotiations are going. Mm. They realise that actually they depend on Labour coming in from the EU and they depend on a lot of trade. So a lot yeah. of people mm. have said to me they want to leave the EU, accept the result of the referendum. They themselves voted for it but they want a lengthy transition but I'm period. I'm confused about this because doesn't it mean that if we remain in the single market for a transition period, that we actually can't then continue to make any deals outside of it because those are the rules of it. So how does that transition period do anything other than delay the inevitable and actually hold us back from having new international trade agreements, well, which is what we need in order to get out? Well, the truth is, doing a trade agreement takes a long time. It can often take years... But you have to start in, it somewhere. And if you, you remain start, in the single market, you, you can't even start. Well, well, you, ca you can start putting the feelers out, which is already feelers happening Feelers is different, now. though. We're, in, we're can, beyond feelers now, But I now, think at we? the moment, the key thing is people are very worried about the economy going off a cliff edge. Even Philip Hammond, who was the Chancellor, was pushing for a longer transitional period. Mm. So I think what Labour has done is put forward something which is sensible for jobs and for the economy, but also it gives them... It sorts their politics out ahead of party conferences as well. You said in your first answer that you think this will appeal to everybody, and with great respect, that's obviously nonsense, because people who want a hard Brexit don't want a soft Brexit, so it's not going to appeal to them, and that's a big constituency. Who it will appeal... Who, who it will appeal... To, well, we'll see about that, but who it will appeal to, of course, is young people, because most young people, most students, people, first-time voters, they, uh, they, they didn't want to go at all, and they would, at the best, want a soft Brexit. So isn't this actually quite a cynical ploy, again, by Jeremy Corbyn, to play to the youth vote. I mean, if he promised that he'd pay off their student debts, which of course we now know was impossible, that was never going to happen. Do you think he's just actually playing quite a clever political game here and going for the young vote? I don't think there's anything cynical about trying to do the right thing for generations to come. This decision to leave the EU is going to be the biggest political decision since the Second World War. It's going to affect people long after we're gone. So it's really important to think about where young people are and to think about the future. I think there's nothing mm. ignoble about this. You're just talking about a transition period of four years. You're yeah, not all saying, beyond. You're I mean, not there's no kind of mark. It forever. I, I, I think let's consider the timeline. This, this to, to illustrate quite how cynical this is. Four months ago, Keir Starmer was saying we will leave the, the single market, we'll end free movement when we leave the EU in 2019. The Labour Party said that in their manifesto at the general election when they went out and told people that's what they were going to press for. Don't talk about the manifestos. The, the Conservative no, manifesto was a complete shambles at the but, last election. Uh, undoubtedly the case, and, uh, but I'm honest enough to say that about my own party where it gets things wrong. And when it comes down to it, what they're now saying is, well, we'll stay in the single market, we'll keep free movement even when we said we would end it. And after that, we want to... Well, we can kind of try to stay in the single market and negotiate out free movement at the same no, time. Yeah. Something Keir, the EU says and Keir, has always Keir, said you Keir cannot Star, do. Keir, They're Keir saying Star, we want something impossible after saying said, something they wouldn't Keir Starmer deliver. has said 
that we will be managing migration after we've come out of the transition period. And I think that's absolutely fine. Okay, last, 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 last question, because yeah. we're pushing time here. Why is it taking so long? Why couldn't Labour be clear about this during... You talk about manifestos and campaigns. Why were Labour so wishy-washy about this subject for months, if not years, and finally they've made this decision? Why is it taking all this time? I don't think it's years. I mean, I would, it I, all I would have liked Jeremy Corbyn to have come well, out with this position earlier. Why is it taking all this time? Well, I think, they were in a, I think they were very divided on it, but I think now they have reached the right agreement. There is massive consensus on, on this side. You have kind of Frank Field saying it's a good thing. You have Chuka Umana saying it's a But surely such a long thing. delay in coming to the decision implies that there isn't unity. Uh, I, do, been... I don't think it's that long a stretch of time. I think to the actual public out there, they've already got Brexit fatigue. I think they like Jeremy Corbyn not just because of Brexit, and I think they'll think this is and, quite sensible. And, and a lot of voters right. know from experience you'll have a new policy by Wednesday. And no, I don't David David is back <laughs> in the <laughs> fold today. He's going back into Brussels, back isn't in he, Mark? So we'll have you on again to talk about exactly, you know, how these talks are going to proceed, because they seem to be a, a very uh, treacle-like experience, Certainly I would does. say. Thank you both. I'm confused. Well, it was a great night for the...